Hello YouTube. Greetings from uh, Tunisia. I know my video is about uh, Morocco, how I've been uh, kidnapped. But since I've been uh, in captivity, I wasn't uh, I wasn't been able to, uh, to record anything. So uh, I'll make this video like uh, combined from two parts. The one part will be talking. Like now, I'm, uh, I'm going to explain what happened to me in detail. And the second part will be some video footage from, the, from Morocco, yeah? So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Keep watching it. The main square of Marrakesh. Wow. <laughs> what a busy place in here. gonna get a, a lot of busier I think from 7 p.m. when everyone starts eating start making food cooking selling that's gonna be fun from them but even now is so many people around during fasting That smell makes me hungry and I haven't had my uh, dinner yet so I might hunt for some uh, uh, eatery restaurant <laughs> Alright, looks like dead end in here. My people lives in here, look. Oh, they even got post. Look the size of the door. I'm short guy. <laughs> Riyad Lola. Oh, Riyad. Riyad's is like, uh, I'm staying in one of the Riyad's. It's like a hostel. Uh, these places look very authentic. Moroccan, oh, Moroccan guest houses. Very cute, cute and cozy, typical Moroccan style. But it's a bit dodgy to walk, especially alone, as I've been already approached by a few guys, and how they say some of them they were trying to sell me a hash. And some of them they said fuck photo, fuck, fuck camera, something like this. So as you see I was uh, wandering around some uh, like dodgy neighborhood <laughs> through some uh, sketchy narrow uh, streets and uh, yeah some guys you know as I said they approached, approached me with offering uh, hashish. The other guys were kind of aggressive towards me, they said fuck the camera get a uh, get a fuck out of here something like this and uh, and the third one came out of nowhere and he said uh, he he noticed me carrying this camera and he said ah oh, you are like sort of vlogger uh, filming around uh, i've got uh, i've got some good footage for you uh, i said what, what are you talking about what do you mean 
he said uh, there is a Berber festival nearby. Berbers are like uh, native native Moroccans. Hang on. Hello. I'm just wandering uh, around this beach right now uh, in Tunisia. By the, uh, by the way, while I'm here, on my right is uh, Libya and then Egypt. On my left, uh, behind that peninsula is uh, Algeria and then Morocco. In front of me, Mediterranean Sea, and it's like uh, 200 kilometers into the sea is uh, Italian islands of uh, Sicily and uh, Sardinia. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, immigrants from here, from this continent, from Africa, getting across to Italian islands and uh, ask for political asylum. That's how they get into Europe. Anyway, what we're saying. Oh, the guy, uh, he said uh, uh, there is a Berber festival nearby. Would you like to go and uh, have a look? Yeah, you can film. It'll be like uh, authentic footage. I said, ah, oh, sounds good. Why not? So, uh, where should I go? He gave me directions. He said, like, walk like can't remember 50 meters or 100 meters let's say 100 meters straight 100 meters to the right it'll uh, it'll take only five minutes he said okay so I, I walked uh, as as as, uh, as he said uh, 100 meters straight 100 meters to the right and then it was like small interjunction like streets small narrow streets crossing you know each other and he said uh, uh, I mean I walk to that point and out of nowhere this guy appears again the same which uh, like five minutes ago gave me directions and I thought wow that's a uh, like surprise how comes you know you gave me directions and like five minutes later you appear at the same spot which we, you guided me to towards to so uh, and, and he he came out like around the corner and he said oh my friend I met you again uh, yeah you're going the right way he said uh, just uh, he gave me another uh, sort of directions and I thought wow that's uh, weird you know you told me straight and right and now you gave me another directions and by the time we chatting to him some motorbike was passing by I think everything was like a setup uh, the motorbike was passing by and he stopped the motorbike and apparently it was his mate he said ah they start talking in arabic but sort of where are you going he said uh, the guy i'm going to berber festival <laughs> that's exactly where i wanted to go he said ah oh, this guy going to berber festival as well uh, can you take him can you give him a lift so uh, yeah he said no problem so that's how I jumped on his bike and this is what happened next. <laughs> okay? Alright. Gonna have a ride now, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Come here, let it come on. In Marrakesh, yeah, yeah first, first day, time. First day, no? Yeah, first time, buddy. First day? Uh, yesterday. Wow, 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 wow. A second day. The second day today. Today, second day, buddy, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. I'm a good driver, don't worry. <laughs> good driver. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Nossa, nossa, era até no fogo no motor, né? Ha, ha! That's old Medina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Chocolat. That's why you see a lot of people in a lot of motorbikes. We are yeah, yeah, now yeah. in old Medina. It's small. Oh my gosh. Don't worry. That's a busy place, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who is this meant for? This gas mask for chain smell. Gas mask. Because here smell little. All right, to smell. For chain smell. All right. All right. That's like a leather factory. Factory, yeah. Yeah. This chalk. Who is it? Chalk. Chalk. Ah, chalk. Two weeks later in chalk. All right. Two weeks. For scrape wool, uh -huh. scrape grease. Uh -huh. After pigeon poop. Pigeon poop. Yeah. I, oh my god. Pigeon gosh. poop, soft leather, <laughs> because ammonia. I see. After color. Wow. That's an interesting. Now one minute here. Upstairs, big upstairs. Come. Right, let's have a look. Finish this, finish. Close here. What's this? Leather? That's covered. Covered, yeah? It's leather. That's covered. Because finish work, covered. Ah, I see, I see. Ah, finish work, covered. So what's inside? What's leather. Inside? Leather, yeah, inside. Camel skin, cow skin, sheep skin, and right. goat skin. All right. All right. Let's have a look upstairs, eh? We're closing. Okay, that's the view from, from above, from the top. That's the leather leather, yeah. leather factory, eh? Le yeah, leather factory. They've got a lot of wells, a lot of like bathtubs with all sorts of different... Uh, different uh, chalk, pigeon <laughs> flour. Some of them uh, chalk, like uh, fermenting the the leather, some of them uh, pigeon poops, some of them with the flowers, yeah, to get a color for the pigeon for the leather. Soft. And pigeon poops is, uh, he said, for making the leather softer. Ah, wow. Color natural, brown, mimosa flower. Nice view. Yeah, natural. All right, Ella, close it. So at that point, the old guy gave me already the third warning. Stop filming, turn the camera off, finish it. So uh, obviously I couldn't film nothing inside. Uh, therefore I'll try to explain in detail what happened. Uh, yeah, uh, as soon as I switched the camera off, he took me to the third floor. Because over the window I was uh, videoing from the second floor, yeah? So he took me to the next level, to the upper floor. And uh, it was like little shop in there. Leather, leather products, all sorts of products, you know, like leather jackets, uh, bags, uh, waist belts, uh, purses, a lot of things. So uh, uh, it was a shop seller. The old guy, another guy was hanging by the door. So three of them. And uh, they start showing me around, you know. Check this, check that. Uh, and I said, uh, okay, it looks nice, looks nice. Uh, I touched one product, I touched the second one. But I said, uh, yeah, it looks nice, but I don't want to buy nothing. Uh, so they said, ah, uh, oh, look at this. Sort of, uh, they gave me a pillowcase leather pillowcase and he said how much is this do you think i said I, i've got no clue i don't know he said no just tell me the price 
I said maybe maybe fifty dollars because it's good quality, nice teachings, uh, nice colors. I oh, know. I said I think thirty dollars. I said thirty dollars. He said no, it's not thirty dollars. It's uh, fifty dollars. All right, fair enough. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. And uh, <laughs> I'm uh, giving him back. He's not taking. I said uh, just take it. I, I don't want it. No, he said. Uh, no, buy it for fifty dollars. He said, "I'm not interested. I don't want it." He said, "Not happy." You know, we start to rising his voice. He said, "All right." You said thirty dollars. Give me thirty dollars. I said, "No, mate. I don't want it. Even for thirty dollars, I don't need it." Yeah, but you said the price thirty dollars. I said you asked me to guess, so I guessed it. Uh, I said I don't have a. I don't need it in the first place, and I'm traveling light with the backpack. He said, uh, I said, uh, it wouldn't even fit in my bag. So he, <laughs> he grabbed that uh, pillowcase, wrapped, 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 rolling, you know, trying to compact as in smaller pieces as he, as he could. Uh, I said, listen, mate, I can't even fit my socks, spare socks in the, in the bag. And you were talking about this chunk of leather. Ah, they were not happy. So, they start, uh, start sort of... Uh, closing up on me you know like intimidating three of them guys and the atmosphere was like oh intense you know I'm in the middle of nowhere on the outskirts of, uh, of the town three strangers around me and I, I feel like that as I said intense atmosphere I thought yeah it's gonna be worst case scenario <laughs> I'm already picture myself you know I'm gonna throw left hook overhead right and jump you know through the door run downstairs and then another guy turned up up the stairs so four of them surrounded me in the room and they were talking in Arabic two of them they they wearing like uh, long robes I was scared I was really scared they they came very close to me like really seriously like face to face they didn't leave even the space, you know, to dodge the punch if, if I need to. Oh my gosh, I was scared. I thought, you never know in this place. Maybe they stab me, maybe they <laughs> kill me, put in one of those wells, cover with the leather. <laughs> because the smell was like a, like a corpse, you know, dead animals in there. Like skinned, whatever they said, camels, cows, uh, sheep. The smell was bad. That's why at the gate, as you saw, he gave me a bunch of uh, of mints, like a gas mask. Ugh, look at this. Uh, sea balls. Uh, yeah, I was really scared. I was scared to the point that I couldn't speak properly. You know, my my language was start stuttering. I couldn't argue with them no more. So I just like. <laughs> Forced myself through them and walked down uh, through the door, you know, down the stairs. I thought whatever happens, happen. And uh, two of them stayed in the room, two of them were following me. And they were like shouting sort of in Arabic language. I didn't understand nothing. And uh, like sort of swearing. So I walked down, went to the yard, walked that pathway towards the gate, pushed the gates and whoo, the gates were open. Uh, they didn't lock the gates and uh, that old guy was following me and uh, the motorbike uh, driver was still waiting outside uh, outside the gates so as soon as get I, I got out of the this enclave I was like whoo now just two of these guys you know the motorbike driver and the old guy so I was feeling like a more <laughs> braver you know I thought two of guy, two of the guys, I can fight them, you know, not not four. And uh, and the the motorbike driver, he said, "Okay, you didn't buy nothing, so you give him uh, some money, you know, because he was showing you around." I said, "I didn't ask him to show me around, you know. You lured me in here. I didn't want to be in this place in the first place." Uh, he said, "Yeah, but." You should have asked him whether it's going to be a fee for showing you around. Oh my gosh, I said, are you going to the shop to look around 
they're not charging you. You're not asking the shopkeeper, you know, to whether it's gonna be fee or not. So just don't waste my time. I said, I'm. <laughs> I said something like, I'm not charging you for talking to me. You're wasting my time. I'm not charging you for that, right? So he said, Ah, oh, then give give him fifty dollars. I said, No, I'm not gonna give him fifty dollars. He said, Okay, give him whatever you can. I know. He said the, the other tourists give him like. $30, $25, give him whatever you can. I said, I'm not gonna give nothing, you know. I was like pissed, seriously pissed. So I was walking towards either way, you know. I didn't, I didn't, I remember the way we came from, but I didn't know uh, the second turn, the third turn. I just wanted <laughs> to get out of this place. Uh, yeah, so this is what, what sort of experience I, I had in, uh, in that leather factory. A tannery factory so uh, once you're in Morocco be cautious yeah and when I came back home I went on the Google and I uh, I typed uh, in the Google like uh, keywords uh, leather factory Morocco scam something like this and it came up with a lot of stories similar stories like mine but in most cases there were two guys or two gu or three people you know uh, a group of people and all of them being not intimidated like me because I was by, by myself, you know, alone. But those people, they got away with paying out, you know, $20, $30 just to get out of this shithole. So yeah, if you dare, be cautious with those uh, leather factories. Peace out. One, two, three. Oh, nice one. Two. Right, looks like I found a traditional Moroccan restaurant and I ordered a traditional Moroccan uh, like chicken with vegetables. It's being cooked in a sort of uh, terracotta clay made pot or something like pyramid shaped. Uh, still sizzling. quite a busy place here so hopefully the food will be nice as well Yeah, delicious, yummy. Uh, hopefully this meal will calm me down after that uh, leather factory experience. <laughs> okay then.